We're all gamers, and HyperX is always ready to game. Competition, commitment, excitement. This is Lionheart, and this is the HyperX Summer Series for the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America, live on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Good afternoon and welcome to beautiful Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, as we get ready to go racing for the third time in this series' history. I'm Justin Prince, Alonso of the booth today is Samuel Ryman. Our director, Sean Ambrose, is in the production truck with our cameras provided by Dougie Beard. So far, the points battle has been tight, but first things first, let's take a look at your GSRC lap guide for what's expected to be a tight track to work around. Welcome to Road America. Nicknamed America's National Park of Speed, it's easy to see why just by looking at how the track is laid out. Long straights are a major feature and drivers will build up incredible momentum before they find themselves interrupted by tight 90 degree corners. In fact, for a four mile circuit, it has shockingly few turns. It also has little in the way of variation in layouts. The main course is only broken up once with a single chicane added in the bend version. But don't take this to mean that it's a boring track. Elevation change happens many times over a lap, with a few places taking you into corners which are quite blind. But two of the turns on the back half of the course are perhaps the most distinctive. One is the carousel with its more than 180 degree radius. It just feels like it never stops. The other is the kink. Terrifyingly fast with very little runoff, it can end someone's race in a flash. As you'd expect, the heavy braking zones make for some ideal overtaking spots. Turn 5 sees plenty with its downhill entry. The hurried downs can offer drivers a chance at a sneak attack if you're brave, and then Canada Corner gives you one last shot before the lap is over. It's no wonder major organizations such as IMSA, IndyCar, NASCAR, and the SCCA all host major races here. All in all, many drivers rate this track as the best track in North America. Many who hop in the seat and try it can quickly understand why. That was a look at your GSRC lap guide for Road America. Now, as we get ready to journey across these roads, let's bring in Samuel Ryman as we get ready for what's expected to be an intriguing race today and what could be a championship determiner, depending on how things fare out today. Yes, thank you, Justin. Well, of course, it's the uh, summer series here for Lionheart. It's just a bit of fun they're having in the middle of the calendar year, and anything we can do to perk 2020 up is appreciated by everybody. They picked two ovals for these four GT cars. Well, those were going to be interesting no matter which ovals they picked. But then when they came to road courses, you know, what are the two most interesting races, uh, racetracks uh, that can produce fun races for us in this fun series in the middle of the season at road courses, the GT Cars Natural Habitat. Well, first, of course, we went to the Daytona Roval, and their second choice was Road America. And I think that's a brilliant choice, because even though, yes, it is uh, what you could almost call a normal, a regular racetrack, you can have great races with Ford GTs here. You can have great races with Skip Barber cars here, all the way up to Formula One cars here on iRacing. They race well here. The thing that makes this track unique is the long straights and the hard braking zones over, especially at Turn 1 and Turn 5, and also a bit towards Canada Corner. And, you, you know, it, it just provides some interesting battles for us all race long with these heavy braking zones and these long straights. And I think especially with, you know, this being a bit of a fun series here at a fun track, it could produce a fun race for us today. Once again, we've already seen a couple at Daytona and Milwaukee. Hopefully we keep that trend going today. Indeed. And let's take a look at the championship standings. The last race, of course, was in August. All alongside the major series calendar where Aaron Morgan still holds on to the points lead after an interesting race at the Milwaukee Mile. James Grohu and Ricky Harden still not yet at the racetrack, should note. Our P2 and P3, 13 and 14 points back. Ryan Otis and Tyra Graf, your top five, separated by 29 points. With it being such a short season, the championship could be decided today, especially with these races today being fairly quick as we look at your format. 
Yeah, so we need uh, some drivers to get up there and challenge Travis Morgan. Well, let's see if they can do it. Here's how they do it. It is round number three of four. Any championship, in theory, can be won in the penultimate race of the season. If a championship leader scores max points and no one else scores any. We're racing the Ford GTE car here with fixed setups around Road America for a 13-lap main event. But you can see there, uh, it's not just a main event. We have two six-lap heat races going into that. Uh, the checkered flag is just going out in practice right now. A qualifying session is about to begin, 10-minute qualifying session, and that will determine whether you start in heat race one or two and where you start in heat race one or two. Should note that while there are four laps available with the size of this track, two minutes on average a lap, it is likely drivers will only get three laps in this respective session, so keep that in mind as the cars make their way on the racetrack remind you real quickly and ask you a question as well if you're interested in advertising with gsrc channels 1 million monthly global impressions are a great way to get your brand new seen by a diverse audience Follow in the description to learn more about the global sim racing channel the weather for today very similar to what we've seen in previous events to say the very least in this series by the way noon start time it will take 78 degrees fahrenheit is the air temp the track temp though is blistering hot since I racing day, May 15, 2020, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind blocked at 2 miles an hour to the north, humidity 55%. Majority of those conditions have been standard throughout the season, but it's some of the hotter track conditions in terms of track temps we've seen this campaign. Yeah, definitely a high track temperature out there today, uh, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Fortunately, the pace lap around here, or not pace lap, out lap, whatever you want to call it, is kind of long. So these drivers have plenty of time to build some heat into their tyres. But you you can see that they're not treating it like a Formula One car would, you know, dillying uh, around here on their out lap. They know, as you mentioned, Justin, that they all have to get a move on, uh, uh, throw their tyres straight to the test because they've got to cross the timing and scoring beam as quickly as they can to try and get as many laps in as they can because even though you might be able to get two or three timed laps in, there's no guarantee all of them will count. Remember, if you put a wheel off in qualifying and eye racing, your lap time will not count. You need to keep in mind, if you've seen the bottom right corner of your screen, lap time and end scoring is available for today's event. GSRC.TV to keep up with your favorite teams and drivers as tonight's racing progresses in the HyperX Summer Series in its third official round in its history. Just about every single car is on the racetrack, by the way, for qualifying, except for Brian Greenlee. The pace separation was actually fairly significant in practice. The top of the board ran in the 203.8, give or take on average. The bottom half of the board ran as slow as 2 minutes and 9 seconds as the best time. That was Greenlee in the 38. Yeah, but it's a relatively small field out here for, for Lionheart. Normally, we're used to seeing fields in IndyCar and also towards the start of a season, more in the 20 or 30 car field side size. But I think we're still going to end up with a great race here today, Justin, uh, for two reasons. Obviously, uh, it's short. And any time you have short races, you know, the main event being 13 laps, that kind of... Uh, prevents the fields from getting too sprung out. And secondly is that slipstream uh, slip streaming we mentioned. You know, you only have to be within a second of a car to get a nice tow going down the front straight, and then we'll get some uh, interesting battles here, here for us to watch throughout today's event. Should not as well. Yes, it's a quick event today, expected, but two of the drivers in the field just took part in about two hours and 30 minutes straight of racing for the major series, should know. Christopher Reagan, as well as just moments ago, Tom Durelli, both took part in what turned out to be two and a half hours of racing for 200 laps in the Silver Crown. So both of those drivers going to be fairly fatigued after what was a very challenging race today. Let's put it that way. Yeah, they're probably hoping they get to relax a little bit during this race. Here we go then. Uh, the drivers are finally going to start 
clicking off some lap times. Andrew Kinsella coming to the line in his number 41 machine here and turning a 204.6. That's 1.2 seconds faster than he was in practice. And so far, as more cars come across the line, it is top. No, it isn't anymore. Aaron Morgan, 205. Should be no surprise. He was your quickest car in practice as well for today. Very strong on the road courses as we've seen so far as Hacker. Now looks to make his way across the strike. Also fairly decent at Daytona to open off the season. This lap, though, does not count for Ron Hacker. That was the incident points we talked about, though, as several other cars still look to put up their first laps on the board. Still halfway to go in qualifying. All right, Connor Harrington, another one of our fast guys here. 237 was his practice time. His qualifying time is way off a pace. Um, so he'll try again. Non-existent, really, because of incident points. So, basically right. Same can be said for Mike Rasmus. So several of these drivers are having incident points during the first laps. So there is still time for some of these drivers to put a time on the board, but you also at the same time, Samuel, you want to have a banker lap just in case. Well, see, here's my thing. I'm slow, so I always like to have a banker lap because that, that gets me ahead of the uh, very slow drivers. Um, and then, you know, I can start to push throughout the rest of the session. I don't know, though. I think these drivers who normally contend at the top of the grid probably want to get, get start going straight for it just because they know they're limited on time. One of the easier places I find to make a mistake for the wheel off, well, there's one right here clipping the grass a little bit on the exit of Canada that Anna, uh, Aaron Morgan just went by. But turn three or turn two, whatever you want to call it, it's called turn three, even though it's the second turn. I find it very easy to run a little wide on the exit there and you get a one X and it's annoying because it's early in the lap. So you realize the next two minutes, you're just driving around them, um, I guess trying to take care of your tires for the next run. By the way, Aaron Morgan runs across the line. A 204, the quickest time by far on the board so far. By seven tenths of a second. While well, Workman puts in his first time a 2049. Now, some of the main things that I've noticed in practice that were separating some of the drivers who are at the top of the board to middle of the board to the bottom of the board seem to be not just struggles on corner exit but also the confidence under braking some cars were losing a couple tenths by braking too early in the corner yeah i think that's a problem i normally have on road courses give up uh I, i'm great at entering like a lamb and exiting like a lion but as you mentioned that that uh, some other drivers here are as well but that doesn't help with qualifying. You, you gotta, you gotta throw it in. You know, you gotta be right on the limit of adhesion the whole time, especially when you have uh, straights as long as this. You want to make sure you're getting the most amount of speed so that you're not losing any of it down on straights. Here we go. Tyler Graf is normally a top contender in this car. Two o four five improves his time, but not his position. A little bit of an increase there as Tommy Ryan has made his way to the racetrack. He is now 14th in qualifying after his first official time. Meanwhile, Tower Graf should know has crashed on his third lap. So Graf has pulled the tow truck out while Tom Drailing will cross the line this time. One of two drivers yet to record a time in qualifying. Ryan currently the other. This time it's a 2078. Wolf. Yeah, that might be a bit of a lack of practice there. As you mentioned, he was just in that silver crown race. Christopher Regan currently sitting 12th, 2.059, and that time didn't count. Not entirely sure he has enough time for another one. That's going to be tight, essentially, under a minute on the board. See if there is a runoff time for these respective drivers to finish their current lap or if they will go immediately to the heat races. New fastest lap, by the way, Aaron Morgan, 203 flat. That's the fastest out of anybody so far today. And remember, this is just qualifying for the heat races. So, so far, you see Aaron Morgan and Mike Rasmus uh, first and second. That doesn't mean they'll get to start first and second for the feature, though. It just means they get to start on pole for their heat races. And, uh, and you know, who, who knows what that is? 
it, who knows how those races are going to play out. They might have a bad heat base and still have their work cut out for them to keep them next time. Especially considering the fact, Justin, I don't know how uh, friendly starting on pole position is going to be for you here. Considering the, the run down to turn one is still a long one, even after you get on the loud pedal and someone third or fourth could try and slipstream you and make a pass into the first corner. Have to wait and see. That's the main thing, especially with the heartbreaking zone to start off the race. Tommy Ryan, one of one, a couple drivers who may be able to put in a time before the end of the clock in the upper left. Ryan, a 204 flat, gets him up the board, P6 overall. Decent starting position for his heat. The last driver here likely to cross the stripe will be Tom Drailing by about a couple seconds. You know, one nice thing about these, uh, and Tom Draylin. Oh, oh he's he, he doesn't make it. Yep, there we go. All right, it's heat race time. Just like that, we go straight to the heat. One heat. You heard that right. Just one heat today with the field size. As a result, how they qualify is how they'll start for the six-lap sprint today. Aaron Morgan starts alongside Mike Rasmus for today's race in the HyperX Summer Series with Ryan Otis and Chris Fowler in row two. Connor Harrington and Tommy Ryan start in row three with Paul Jenkins and Andrew Kinsella in row four. Rounding up the top ten, it's Tyra Graff and Trevor Malone in 10th spot, Sam. Bart Workman will be starting from 11th ahead of series founder George Renzaldo. Matt Taylor back in 13th and Christopher Reagan in 14th. Ron Hacker 15th and Tom Draylin 16th. And Brian Greenlee did not turn a time during qualifying and so he will start 17th and last. So yeah, the reason this has happened is there was a cutoff of 23 cars. They didn't want to have heat races with uh, less than 12 cars in them. So that's why they've all been thrown into one heat. And I was about to make a note that, you know, splitting it into two heat races would have helped out someone like uh, Tyler Graf, uh, who, who didn't have a good qualifying session. Instead of starting ninth for this heat race, he would have been able to start, you know, fifth place for uh, a heat race with only five cars. But you know what? This makes it a bit nicer for our viewers as well. They don't have to sit through uh, three different pace laps at Road America. We only have to do this part twice. So all the cars will now get the chance to warm up their tires on the full pace lap before the green flag flies the upcoming time by. Once again, we're at Elkhart Link, Wisconsin, here at America's Natural Park of Speed. National Park specifically, I should say. Four miles, 6.5 kilometers, 14 turns around this circuit open since 1955. And between the cities of Milwaukee and Green Bay. Strong session so far for Morgan and Rasmus. What are your keys to victory if you want to get max points today and win yourself a championship? Well, hard to say, honestly. I mean, obviously, stay up front for the drivers uh, who are up front. It, it's a bit of a sprint race, isn't it? Uh, all we're seeing here, we've got a six-lap heat race and then a 13-lap feature. So basically, you're calling it a 19-lap race with a red flag thrown in after lap six, where all the drivers get to come into the pits, get new cars, and go out there again with cold tyres, fresh tyres. Uh, I think there will be one or two drivers towards the back end of this starting grid who uh, are able to make their way up front just due to the fact that, um, you, you know, you can make passes here. That being said, it's going to make life a heck of a lot easier if you keep it up front. Who are some of those drivers you think are going to be able to do that? Uh, well, I hope Tyler Graf, for his sake, can move it up from his ninth starting spot. That's a lot lower than where I anticipated him qualifying. I think Matt Taylor has also done uh, quite well this season. Um, I'll just have to go back and uh, check my notes on that as to you know what his pace was like on the Daytona Road course. But honestly, I think, Justin, I won't be able to answer that question until the start of a feature race, because I guarantee someone here in the heat race is going to have a bad race and uh, they're going to end up in a, a poor starting position, a start, a starting position that they don't deserve, and they're going to give us some excitement when it comes to feature race time.
In regards to Matt Taylor, by the way, P5 finish in the feature race at that time, including one lap led in what was a crazy, crazy battle. Time and help set up Morgan for momentum from that point on. A look from some of the cars on board is still about a third of a pace lap to go. It's going to be a tricky one. Keep in mind, by the way, no pit stops expected. All cars can make it on fuel 15 laps, so they don't have to come in for fuel. Yep, so straight up sprint race pretty much, um, as we mentioned, kind of for like a 19 lap race with a red flag at the end of lap 6, that's uh, how, how I kind of view this, uh, how things are going to go down. Yep. And Darren Morgan getting ready to lead them to the green for the heat race. Of note, the second and third place cars in the championship standings have not made it in time for the sprint race to start off today's action. Aaron Morgan, as a result, can likely potentially clinch a championship today. Safety car coming off the track this time. Get ready to get rolling. The HyperX Summer Series is green once again from Road America. Early jump by Aaron Morgan on the rest of the field. Now, is that good or bad? He's obviously gotten about five car lengths over the rest of his competition now. We'll see how strong the slipstream is. Looks like it's worked out for him so far. The battle's on for second. Way deep on the brakes there. Uh, but able to keep it on the racetrack are all the leaders. And we got one car sideways at the back. That was Trevor Malone. He's able to keep it rolling, though. That was inside the top ten. However, Morgan's already pulled away by a second from Mike Rasmus from Nexus Esports and one of the contenders in the Road to Pro Series as well as his campaigns in Lionheart Racing Series competition. Who's holding on still to that spot? Yeah, Aaron Morgan's done all the heavy work right at the start of this race. I think he's got an easy ride up front there now. But second on back, all quite tight. Rasmus is about a few car lengths over the rest of the competition, working their way through turn six. Now into turn seven, the right-hander, which will lead them down the hill into a heavy braking zone here, turn eight. And then, of course, we come up to the carousel, the kink and Canada corner, some of the more famous racetracks in the United States uh, road courses. When do you think Road America? Can't forget about that big bridge, right? I'm going right underneath it. Separation started build up for most of the pack as they go from 73 to the racetrack. Morgan has already stretched the gap now to 1.2 seconds. Just about the entire top 10 right where they started so far. A bit of trouble coming out of the carousel. I believe that was Kinsella who went around in the middle of the straightaway. We are still green and rolling though. That was the 41 who went around. Yeah, Andrew Kinsella, fortunately, he spun off of a racing line. He's got a pretty nasty punch in the front of a 41 car. Obviously, the biggest thing that's going to hurt him here is that we've had a clean start, and so he's probably going to be starting, if not last, uh, uh, very much towards the very back for the feature race. So he is one driver here who will make things fun to watch during the feature. First lap of the HyperX Grand Prix at Road America goes to Aaron Morgan, Rasmus to one second, Fowler, Otis, Rhine, Harrington. Your top six at the moment with Jenkins, Graf, Workman, and Reagan right where they started so far in this action. It's been that type of run so far. Let's take a look at what happened to Kinsella, by the way. Once again, this was coming out of the kink, one of the danger zones you talked about. Yeah, my guess without seeing it initially is that he put a couple of wheels off on the exit and that spun him around. We've picked a replay up a couple of corners uh, early here, but you can see he was running pretty much to uh, exactly where he started. Haven't been a whole lot of big movers so far. Working his way through the carousel and now you get on the loud pedal, try and find that nice turn exit point. And again, my guess is that he just drifts a little bit too far to the left, gets the wheels on the grass and goes sideways. And there we go. Caught it right on the mark as he hits the concrete wall on the inside. Takes him a little while to get rolling too since he's right against the end of the straightaway. On the right side of the track as a result, he's 22 seconds behind the leader and about six seconds behind Brian Greenlee, who was the slowest in practice. Speaking of battles, the battle along the back part of the field has been intriguing, should know. Tom Trailing, Georgian Zardo, Ron Hacker, 
and several others have been going back and forth in this respective grouping. They were double wide off the jump on the first lap through sector one and sector two. These groupings of cars were joking a little bit that they were expecting to fight for 17th. Uh, well, seeing as though there's are several cars who made the start, uh, I think they're happy about that. That they're not battling for higher than that. Yeah, well, I'm sure there'll still be more attrition throughout this heat race and the feature. I'm also keeping an eye on third on back. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are quite close. Fowler, Otis, Ryan, and Hamilton. All of these drivers started uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, but in a different order to how they run now. And I think we'll see them all switch around a little bit more. So here we go through turn one. Now they go down the hill. I think turn two is what this lazy kind of bend to the right there is called. And now we go into turn three, uh, but this, this is critical. You need to get a good X out of turn three. So on this run down the back straight, you can try and make a pass heading into turn five, since we're calling it, uh, that turn three. This might as well be turn five. Let's see, I think Ryan has a nice round of notice here. Yes, he does. Bit of a block there a little bit as Ryan goes back up to the top. Gives up a little bit of a shot, in fact, to Otis. Up across the rumble strips as Ryan gets the better run. Off to turn six. Move Tommy Ryan up to fourth position as Harrington nearly runs over Otis as well. This has allowed Chris Fowler to pull away a little bit. We'll see if he's able to maintain that gap. But this is where that slip stream that we were talking about at the top of the show could come in. It, it, you know, you might go to some tracks like Detroit or something where you look at the gap Chris Fowler has now and say, oh, he's safely in third place. Well, if uh, if Ryan is just able to hang on to the coattails of his slip stream, maybe he'll be able to pull back up to uh, Fowler's bumper going down the long straight into turn one and again the long straight into turn five and we'll have a nice set battle for third. Right now, though, the battle is for fifth place between Otis and Harrington. Should note that the 21 er Braun Hacker did have a spin in turn six. Put him back to last, right behind Kinsella. He's now five seconds back of that group. This grouping of cars still tight as Otis seems to be losing a ton of pace on this short one already. Harrington looks like the faster car already. Otis a little bit stronger on exit, but he does have that draft once again. What are we surprised to see him at this time? Yeah, I think things will start getting interesting for 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th soon between uh, Jenkins, Graf, uh, Regan and Taylor, but we'll keep an eye on this battle as well because it's for more prestigious positions and they're going to hit these breaking zones first. Everyone holding station for now, but let's see if down into turn 5 we can see uh, having to try... Oh no, he's on the grass, he's sideways and able to get it woed up before he runs into the back of Otis. Bit of a mistake there now from Harrington. So take him out of the conversation for the battle. Let's take a look on board. Once again, this is with the 44. He just gets a little too wide. He's trying to make the turn as wide as possible uh, so that he can get a good run going down the back straight. But he just makes it too wide and uh, puts a couple of wheels on the grass. We've got a battle for position, uh, for seventh position, as we come back to live action. Paul Jenkins has lost that position to Tyler Graf. I wouldn't be surprised if Paul Jenkins uh, drops back a couple more spots. And not that he's slow, but uh, Taylor and Regan are pretty good road course drivers, and I have a feeling that, uh, that their qualifying position is not truly representative of their pace around here. So let's see, uh, it, Jenkins has lost a position to Graf already. I think he might lose a couple more here. A minute two to go this time by, and give credit though to Jenkins. You know, from being Mr. Consistency in the Accord Throwback IndyCar Series, still leads the point standings there after having just a second year of the season a couple weeks ago. Still holding on well, though, as he's got a better run, though, to Tyler Graff. Might have a shot. Making a move in Canada Corner. Does he take it? He's looking and can't get it to stick. Yeah, that's going to hurt him on exit there. Uh, credit to him. He's uh, doing stronger than I thought he would. I haven't raced him in a couple of seasons, to be honest. Maybe he's uh, uh, picked up a bit of road course experience from when I last raced him. Over Trouble, the Tommy Ryan, the 90 off the track. He's against the tire barrier. That's a pity. He was running in a nice fourth place position. Here we go. The battle is now on between Taylor and Jenkins. Drag racing down the front straight. 
We're able to pass on by him and gain the spot. This is now for P7. Jenkins gives him the space. Move Matt Taylor up as Taylor moved nearly up into the gravel trap. This battle looking like it's going to continue to scrap potentially, though, all the way down the rain sweep into turn five. Jenkins wanting to make sure he gets as many points as he can here, it looks like today. He's already dropped several positions, a major block to the left. Jenkins back to the right. Not able to take a move or a look quite yet as a peak as a card's in the grass. It's Tower Graph again. Uh, that's, uh, my guess is he just overcooked the bacon zone there on turn five. So you can see on the time in the scoring on the left side of your screen, Tommy Ryan has got going again. He's down in 13th place there, ahead of Andrew Kinsella, who's recovered to 14th. So even in six laps, seeing a little bit of drama already in this heat race. I want to take a look at what happened, by the way, to Tommy Ryan, who's now in 13th position. While these cars go to the start of Sector 3, this is what happened in his end of Sector 3. Bit of a hard hit to the tire barrier. Let's see what happened to cause that or not. Either way, Tommy Ryan, 13th. Yeah, back to live pictures here because we're entering the closing moments of this race. Aaron Morgan hasn't built up as much of a lead as I thought he would have. After he got the monster start that he did, I thought, okay, well, you know, he's been the faster car through practice and qualifying. He's going to uh, pull away and have a quiet time. But Mike Rasimus able to keep that gap on this just over one second. Yes, indeed. White flag is out for the sprint race in the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America in the HyperX Summer Series. Gap is still 1.2 seconds, and again, Rasmus just keeping him at bay, as you mentioned, was actually two tenths quicker last time by with the draft. Yeah, so if he's able, you know, if a driver's able to pick up a nice toe going down into turn five, I, I think we'll see a couple of good uh, battles going into turn five this lap. The best one might be for seventh place. Paul Jenkins and Christopher Reagan, that battle was still on. Yes, indeed. Let's take a look towards that as they've now entered the start of a rain sweep all the way down towards turn five. Christopher Reagan now looking to gain one more position. Try and get valuable track position for the feature. He's gone from 14th to 8th. Bit of a block. Will Christopher Reagan be able to go for the switch? He tries to get the better corner exit. Can't get the run to pilt to the inside in turn six. Graf gained some time back as well in this. Yeah, so here we are, Christopher Reagan and uh, well, uh, Matt, Matt Taylor, who's ahead of this battle, have definitely been two of the bigger movers through this field. Paul Jenkins, again, credit to him. I thought he would uh, drop down the order pretty quick, uh, but he's doing a much better job than I anticipated, holding on to seventh place right now, driving defensively very well, and really he's only got one more turn left to try and cover off uh, threats from behind, and that's the entry of Canada Corner coming up in just about 10 seconds here. In that time, though, the leaders, Aaron Morgan, Mike Rasmus, coming out of the final sections of the racetrack. Aaron Morgan has been so strong in Sector 2 today. That's where he's now grown the gap an additional three tenths on Mike Rasmus. And as the checker flag waves, the sprint race for the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America goes to Aaron Morgan. Third place, a lot closer than I thought it would be. Chris Fowler's going to get it from Ryan Otis, but I think Fowler must have had some kind of mistake on the final lap. He lost two seconds. And I believe something happened to Reagan as well in the night race and the 19 machine. Here's what Paul Jenkins and Tyra Graff were fighting for, P7. But remember, Reagan was in that fight right before we went to the race leaders. He's now all the way back in 11th position at the checker flank. Something must have happened down in Kettle Bottoms. He attempted to pass on Paul Jenkins, I think, is what happened. Uh, yeah, uh, and he completely overshot Kennedy Corner. Going to be a little bit frustrated. Let's take a look towards this to see what happened here. Go a little bit further back. It's all the way in Canada Corner specifically, believe, that caused the trouble spot in that respective moment, unfortunately, for him. Yeah, well, it, it, the session just advanced to uh, a warm-up. I have a feeling that's uh, what uh, 
what's mixing things up a little bit for us right now. Not able to pull up that replay. But basically, he just completely overdrove the entry. There wasn't any contact but between him and Jenkins. But unfortunately for Regan, it cost him about uh, three starting positions for the feature. Talk a little bit more in just a few moments. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel for coverage of the HyperX Summer Series. Welcome back, everyone, to the Virtual Road America for more coverage of the HyperX Summer Series. The best drivers in the Lionheart Racing Series compete in a four-race championship throughout the summer months. August seen some entertaining action. We've seen some entertaining action for the start of the calendar for September. And Aaron Morgan has basically made himself into a... has put himself, rather, into a near-perfect situation to be able to be named champion if he continues this pace after dominating and leading every single lap in the sprint race today here, Samuel. Yeah, uh, Mike Rasmus was able to keep him much more honest than I anticipated. Third and fourth switched positions from uh, where they started, Chris Fowler and Brian Otis. And the drive in fifth place started fifth place as well, Connor Harrington. So things were quiet for those first five positions in the heat race. But uh, sixth on back, things got interesting. Matt Taylor, I said I thought he was a bit out of place. He went from 13th to 6th in that heat race. Another big move, of course, was Christopher Regan, who went from 14th and would have finished about 8th or so until he completely just overshot Canada Corner on the final lap. That dropped him back to 11th. Other drivers who went in the wrong direction in that heat race, Tommy Ryan, Andrew Kinsella, and Trevor Malone. Uh, uh, it was he the driver who had that big moment exiting turn one on the opening lap. I think that's what cost him. Indeed, we're just talking about drivers also breaking themselves. Christopher Reagan absolutely did for that P11. We'll see how he recovers in this one. With that, 
Fastest driver in practice goes to George Zardo. Give him credit for that. He starts deep in the field, though, in this feature. Speaking of said driver's lineup, one minute for the cars to roll it onto the racetrack. They'll be led, though, by your winner of the sprint race in Aaron Morgan. Mike Rasmus starts in second. Chris Fowler, Ryan Otis will start in row two. Connor Harrington, row three, along with Matt Taylor. Paul Jenkins and Tyra Graf in row four. Bart Workman will have to put some work in from the mid-pack. While George Anzardo quietly came away with a top 10 in that race, Samuel. Yep, and starting from 11th position will be the aforementioned Christopher Reagan, ahead of Tommy Ryan and Andrew Kinsella and Trevor Malone. So all the drivers there on rows number six and rows number seven are drivers who have uh, uh, something to prove, trying to compensate for their mistakes in the heat race. And they've got 13 laps to get it done. Rounding out our 17 car field, Tom Draylin, Ron Hacker, and Brian Greenlee. So it's our chance for some of these drivers to improve on their performances from the sprint race and earn some points, double the distance. Again, drivers can make it on fuel, as you treat, as you mentioned, almost like a competition yellow. And everyone's deciding it's time for Blinky Lights time to try and see who will be able to have Blinky Lights in burnout time in this one. Your thoughts for race two of the day. Uh, well, I hope things get a little bit more interesting up front. Uh, Aaron Morgan pretty much walked at that heat race, but I have a feeling it was his uh, launch off the start line that really helped him do that. And so Mike Rasmus, I think, really needs to try and be a bit more on top of the uh, race start this time. He doesn't necessarily have to try and beat Morgan into the first corner. But if I was Rasmus and I wanted to win this race, I'd try and do everything I can so that coming out of turn three, I'm right on his rear bumper because uh, I'd like to try and uh, take advantage of a Moraine sweep, which is a uh, long straight that they're going down now to try and make a move into turn five. I have a feeling if you, if you give Aaron Morgan, you know, about a second like they all did last time, that could be game over. I don't know, though. These drivers have never raced uh, uh, the 4GT Car 413 lap feature event at Road America, so who knows what to expect. Brian Greenlee, I think, may have a problem because he spun out after turn one on this pace lap at the back end of the field, went off on the grass again nearly in turn four and heading towards the Moraine Sweep. Now it looks a bit more stable, but Greenlee has, is having an adventure this pace lap. Yeah, he's a... something happened to Matt Taylor there. Has he lost the connection or something? He's shown up as grey on our time yeah. in scoring. He had a technical issue in qualifying, I believe. He's now had an error technical issue in the feature today. This is going to hurt him even more so for his finishing result. Looking like more bad luck for Matt Taylor. Second time he's had the technical issue in the span of one hour for today's round. Today's round. Yeah, I haven't seen him reappear yet. Normally when uh, a car's gone for 20 seconds, you can, uh, uh, it's game over. Unfortunately, he might lose the connection. Obviously, he'd be able to come back in, but I don't anticipate this race having any yellow flags or safety cars or anything like that. So he'd have a tough time uh, coming back up. Just stalling time, waiting for confirmation here from iRacing that he's lost the connection. I'm sure we'll get it in a couple of moments. Still about a third of a racetrack to pace the lawn as you take a look for Mike Rasmus. What do you think he needs to do to try and keep up and or try and pass Morgan in this race? He lost a lot of time in that last lap, for example, three tenths. Yeah, that could have just been him realizing that, you know, he just needed to bring the car home in second place. And Matt Taylor has lost the connection. So unfortunately, that takes us down to 16 cars and all the drivers type in F in the driver chat to pay their respect. So one of the drivers who could have contended for a top five, no longer a factor, unfortunately, for the results. But for Aaron Morgan, he'll be looking for the full round sweep for the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America. Final corner to go around after Bill Mitchell bend and up the Road America straight. It's Aaron Morgan, Mike Rasmus row one, Bauer and Otis row two. Off the track goes the safety car. Here we go, off and away we go for racing. 
Once again, a nice launch by Aaron Morgan. And uh, unfortunately for Mike Rasmus, Chris Fowler got a nice start too. And Rasmus can't pull over to try and tuck into Morgan's slipstream because he had the car to his inside. So I think the driver winning the battle for second here might be Chris Fowler on the inside. Rasmus using the curb on corner exit. All of the drivers through turn one cleanly this time. And now second place all on his own sim is Chris Fowler. If they don't want Aaron Morgan to win this race, they need to let Chris Fowler go go to business right here in second place but already Morgan once again has built out about a 10 car length lead and that means that uh, any slipstream that Fowler is getting there in second place is going to be diminished so things are looking good for the driver 48 as they head into the heavy braking zone for turn five good launch overall once again for Morgan up a tenth gained a tenth in the corner exit as they start sector two off towards the hurry downs they go the biggest movers already off the jump. Ryan plus three, plus two, Kinsella and Mark Malone. Greenlee also gained a spot of Ron Hacker along with Matt Taylor in this race so far as Fowler loses another tenth and a half in the breaking zone in turn eight. Tyler Graf had a bit of a scary moment coming out of turn five. He just overshot it a tiny bit, got his wheels in the grass, and things could have ended uh, very badly there. But they didn't. He was able to hold on to it, and he is still holding down sixth position right now as they head on into the kink. Let's hope we don't see any repeats of what Kinsella did in the heat race here. Hopefully so, as we'll see how this factors in. No send, though, from Rasmus. Down the straightaway, Workman and Ryan traded the position back and forth. You've seen at the tail end of that last shot. Now, the race lead, again, is similar to the last race. 1.2 seconds. Oh, crash, crash. Tyler got sideways and got rammed from behind. And uh, Tyler Graf went for a spin. I think most of it took place off track. And Ansardo is also off the track. So the 26 spinning around. That's from the top five. And Jenkins hit him in the back end and lifted Graf's back tires off the ground. Three cars go off the track in the sequence. Amazed it wasn't more, to be honest. That was a massive impact between Jenkins and Graf. Jenkins is still out there. Uh, I don't know how bad the front end of his Ford GT is going to be. No fast repairs today, keep in mind. So now some of these cars significantly damage and zardo though got the least amount of damage of course in that he put his left side tires into the grass watching that happen on the right side of the track in turn he's now stuck in a battle with graf meanwhile p9 is getting heptic that's where reagan is now fighting with workman malone can sell him on the drivers in this group yeah, Workman is a driver who has uh, started to impress me more and more in Lionheart. In other words, he's a driver I start to worry more and more about each race. It's nice to see him having a good run here. Uh, Andrew Kinsella, of course, is a fast road course driver who's only back there because of his mistake at the kink of the heat race. So I think he's going to be charging his way through this pack. Possibly, absolutely. Still 11 to go this time. Still early on in this race. As that pink machine of Christopher Reagan losing a bit of time to sell. Paul Jenkins, by the way, is still the lead car in this group. Surprisingly, maybe one or two scratches on Jenkins' car. That's about it. P2, meanwhile, Rasmus wants to get by Fowler. They've lost another second in the span of this lap. Here's a look from Rasmus on board. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Rasmus was like, OK, Fowler, you've got me for second and, you know, I'll just uh, be content to follow you for now. But now they put two laps on the board. And as you mentioned, the gap was open to two seconds between Morgan and Fowler. So now I'm sure Rasmus isn't being as uh, polite. He's getting a bit more impatient and wants to start making stuff happen. He dropped back, back a little bit, exiting the final turn. So maybe we will try and get a run down the Moraine sweep and make a uh, position up into turn five. Rasmus is also going to be a little concerned about the battle for fourth and fifth behind him between Harrington and Otis, because if he, st if he stays behind Fowler for too much longer, these two might catch him. Taking a look right now at Harrington and Otis also should note Reagan and Kinsella are still going at it with an air chance into the drafting zone. Let's take a look towards that direction as you can see them line up. Of note, Graf and Greenlee have ducked off the track. No major sends. P2 is side by side though at the end of the racetrack. Rasmus got clear. 
through the Moraine sweep off to turn six. Yeah, Greenlee and uh, Graf both went off in turn one and separate incidents put it in the wall and they're pretty much done. We've got a nice battle going on for eighth place between Kinsella, just got by uh, Christopher Reagan, who's now being pressured from behind. And we join them as they come through turn seven, the passing zone down at the bottom of a hill here. Not quite close enough to try and send it quite yet. Still, though, all these drivers lined up in a row. The next best drafting zone is Keto Bottoms coming up on the area of the carousel this time. And that was where Reagan sent it off into the kitty litter after completely missing the braking zone in the corner of the last lap of the sprint race. How, Hamilton put a couple of wheels off from fourth place, right? Otis, might, no, Otis doesn't challenge him, so we'll keep the cameras uh, with this battle because I wouldn't be surprised if we see some drivers trying to outbreak each other into Canada. No, nothing yet. And the reason why they're not doing it, uh, Justin, is because they know that if they uh, if they do get in front, well, they might just be sitting ducks down the front straight here. You know, this is a much easier place to make a move. Absolutely, and Reagan, though, is still about three, four car lengths back of that, and Jenkins is running away. Jenkins having a strong run in his last race in the Throwback IndyCar Series, should note, is now leading this group 10 seconds back of the lead. That's time by six tenths of a second quicker than the cars behind him. None of them, again, able to make a move. Just no one's close enough to be able to get enough of a toe to make a dive quite yet. Yeah, I mentioned it during the heat race, so I'll mention it again, but I must have been thinking of a different driver than Paul Jenkins uh, when I was talking about him not being great at road courses because he's definitely proven me wrong today. He's uh, holding a seventh, solid seventh place. That's where he qualified. That's where he finished in the heat race. That's where he started this race, and that's where he runs now. So where do you think he's going to finish? P7? Well, we'll see if uh, things get a bit more exciting for second or fourth here. He might gain some positions. Take a look at second specifically. Mike Rasmus, as we mentioned, made the pass last time by. It's full eight tenths of a second quicker. The downside is it's a much bigger gap he needs to close now. It's 2.5-ish seconds between him and Morgan. that probably going to be difficult to do because Morgan was fastest in practice and fastest in qualifying. But again, these are pretty heavy race cars and the track temperature is very high. It is not out of a question that tyre where, well, okay, the track temp's gone down a little bit, but yeah. still high. Um, it, it's not out of a question that tyre wear could be a factor by the end of this thing. And we'll see if Rasmus has been able to take better care of his tyres. Not that I think Morgan's bad with his tyres, but honestly, it's the only thing Rasmus can hope for at this point. Absolutely. Christopher Reagan, meanwhile, P9, will take it towards that, look towards that. Workman still keeping them in check. Kinsella still holding on a little bit closer, though, for the pink machine. Yeah, the quality of driving uh, throughout the entire field has been good. We thought drivers like Tommy Ryan and uh, Andrew Kinsella and Christopher Regan would be on the move. And we might see a pass here uh, by Regan on Kinsella. No, a little too late. Um, but, you know, that the drivers that they have to pass are no slouches. And, uh, and so it's just making it a little bit difficult for them all to move through the field. And we're seeing some great mid-pack racing, not just in this race, but the heat race too. P3 is starting to become a bit of an accordion effect now. As full of Fowler is dropped back right into the clutches of Harrington and Otis. So Fowler, his pace has just dropped off a cliff. Yeah, so maybe this is a sign of uh, a little bit of tire wear for the driver of a number 20 car. And I'm sure that will be making Harrington and Otis a uh, little bit impatient. I almost wouldn't be surprised if we start to see Harrington uh, blink his headlights. He seems to be a fan of a driver who does that. Maybe we'll try and get into Fowler's head that way. You also see, I'm starting to see a little bit of the tire smoke kicking up. It's starting to lock up the brakes, I think maybe Fowler is doing too. So that's also heating up a little bit of the tires as well. Trying to turn the car while under braking. 
Yeah, well, these are fixed setups. I'm assuming that they're allowed to adjust their brake bias uh, um, too. But, you know, there's some things you can normally adjust in an open setup race to help uh, uh, take care of your tires a little bit better. You know, tire pressures, tow, camper angles, all that good stuff. And uh, the drivers don't get to do that in the fixed setup. So some of them will smoke their tires a little bit more than others. Looking back towards this grouping once again, where Paul Jenkins is still at the Pied Piper for Kinsella and Rankin. Reaching the mark now, where these drivers were at to end the sprint race. And Jenkins this time feeling like he needs to defend. Starting to feel a little bit of pressure now with the slipstream. Actually did break up the draft a touch. Again, though, even though things are spread out a little bit here, he's not out of the woods yet because there's that Moraine sweep where he's still got to keep an eye on his mirrors with Kinsella and Regan, two very fast drivers behind him. He's uh, going to have to keep a very close eye on these mirrors because I think Kinsella's got a good run here. Really decent, strong run. Can he get the pass, though? Drivers having a bit more patient in this race. Kinsella not so patient now. Takes the pounce. Jenkins gives it to him. Uh, I'm just looking at timing and scoring. We'll keep our cameras on this battle for now, but look at the gap between Morgan and Rasimus. First and second. Aaron Morgan overshot turn five this lap, and it cost him a second. So you can see there might be a battle for the lead, but it's not on now. This is still one of our tighter battles on the circuit, but just something for our viewers to keep an eye on the timing and scoring on the left side of your screen and also at GSRC.tv. Indeed. Rasmus, it had been catching them, by the way, just a little bit prior to that, should note. So it is 1.1 seconds or so. Back in the red box, the car's around to the wall. That's Trevor Malone. And that's uh, unfortunate because Trevor Malone is a driver who I think had that slide at the start of a heat race. So that put him a bit further back in the field uh, for, for the start of this race. He'd been doing a nice job working his way up from 14th to 10th. Couple of wheels on the grass, exiting the carousel, light contact with the wall. He's able to get going again, won't have to pit, but costing him a lot of time and positions. So Malone now back to P12, the battle for the lead. It's now closed up once again, as mentioned, 1.2 seconds. So Mike Rasmus just a little bit out of touch from the draft, but had been reeling in that 48 a little bit. Let's take a look from Mike. Yeah, so now they're coming down the Moraine sweep once again down towards turn five. So Morgan just overshot this last lap, and I wonder if he saw Rasmus closing in on him a little bit and that got in his head uh, a tiny bit. Or is Rasmus just doing better job of taking care of his tires? Very good questions. But again, Morgan is the best car so far right in this part of the track. From turn six all the way up to turn 11. He's been able to pull a bit of space on Rasmus. That's what he did in the sprint race. Well, we just passed halfway, coming to six laps to go this time in the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America. Rasmus this time is keeping within arm's distance. He actually is closing up the gap now in this section for the first time all day. Yeah, uh, whether it's tires or whether it's mind games or whether Rasmus has been sandbagging throughout the entire session so far, I think things are, uh, are pl starting to play into the 68's favor. If you're on any kind of betting site that Lion ha Lionheart has, first off, I don't know of any, but secondly, I'd place your bet on Rasmus now because the odds are going to start going uh, down. If you want some big money, you might want to do it now. Mike Rasmus's best career finish in a Lionheart series is a P2 run. That was in the Lotus 79s in the Retro Series back at Sonoma. That was all the way back on July the 30th. This is his best shot of the season so far to try and get a victory in any Lionheart sanctioned series. Six to go this time. Gap is now nine tenths. Mike Grasimas and I then are P2 buddies. Our best finish in the Lionheart Retro Race is second. Uh, I, I, think, I think he deserves more credit though. Sonoma's a, a bit trickier than a Gateway. Was it Gateway or was it Milwaukee? I can't remember. But yeah. 
Uh, we've also got the great battle for third place going on. Fowler, Harrington, Otis here. These drivers have all been handing around each other. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a pass attempted here by Harrington. Harrington has tried to pick up the look so far. Nothing quite concrete. Best run he's had actually backs it up a little bit. So again, not willing to send it up the inside yet on Chris Fowler. Just not close enough, he feels, to make the move. This is now five seconds behind a race leader. That's how much these cars have fallen off. They're in the 204s in this group. The leaders are still running their personal best. Yeah, 2029 by Mike Carasimus last lap. That uh, is not the fastest lap of the race. Aaron Morgan holds it at, at that at a 2028, but definitely proven that he still has pace in these late stages. And the times we're seeing the differences from top two to these cars is if you know how to drive at a road course, you know how to minimize the tire wear and can minimize fall off. For these cars, for these drivers specifically, it feels like almost their tires have heated up. They're losing more time as a result. Yeah, and these are relatively new names, I think, in Lionheart that we're seeing up front. Aaron Morgan, Mike Rasmus, and Chris Fowler. So if you haven't checked out the Lionheart IndyCar series or Lionheart Retro series yet, which races the uh, Lotus 79 cars on the ovals and road courses, you might want to start doing that because it looks like we've got some hefty competition coming up in the next couple of seasons. Best career finish, by the way, for Chris Fowler in a Lionheart sanctioned series in 2020, P4. That was in the Indy Challenge at Michigan, all the way back on April 23rd. A couple of our career top fives in that stretch as well. A career average finish of 13.7. His last lap put him back in the 203s, though. However, that is still half a second slower than what the leaders have done. Speaking of the leaders, Rasmus ate another four tenths into the gap. It's now four tenths for the lead. Yeah, he's called him. He, he's not close enough yet to make a move, but with four laps left to go, Aaron Morgan is uh, going to have some work to do. Not that he hasn't been working hard so far, but the uh, entire picture of his race has just now changed. Last miss in the past five laps, he's been on average three tenths of a second plus quicker than your race leader in Aaron Morgan. All right, there, there is the passing opportunity of Canada Corner coming up in a couple of moments here. I think Rasmus is A, too far back to make anything work there though, and B, he wouldn't want to even if he could. The front straight in turn five again are good passing opportunities. And even though it's a lot of racing left, you know, uh, we're coming to four laps left to go. That's eight minutes of racing still. That we're running out, you know, we're going to start running out of passing opportunities. I'm sure Mike Rasmus, when he does see an opportunity uh, heading into turn one or heading into turn five, he's going to have to take it. Absolutely. He lost a tenth this lap. Can he close up some more time, though, in the braking zone and down the Road America straight? He's got the advantage of the trap. Actually loses more time. Had to back up his arc, try to set it hard on the brakes. Back to once again a half a second though with the draft. Four to go this time by the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America. Well, when and, you're talking. And a new purple lap, in fact, by Rasmus by seven one thousandths of a second. Yeah, well, when you're talking of dri about drivers of this talent level, uh, Aaron Morgan and Mike Rasmus, they know how to drive offensively and defensively. And what Morgan might start doing in turns like uh, turn three and turn one is actually backing up his entry a little bit, knowing that Rasmus can't pass him there and kind of trying to get a better run on the exit. I'm sure we'll also start to see him weave a little bit, try and break the toe. He's not doing that yet, but I think he knew Rasmus was too far back. Oh, Rasmus gets a little bit of a slide there, it looked like, uh, going through turn five. Still looking okay, though. Still within arm's reach of about six tenths of a second. Keep in mind... The next couple weeks, including this series, filled with a lot of pressure because we've mentioned him running in road to pro for Nexus Esports. He's just 26 points ahead of that top 20 cutoff to make it to the pro series in the winter to try and fight for a spot in the ENASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series. 
So this stretch of races are some of the biggest in his career, whether in Lionheart or in sim racing in general. Yeah, now all of a sudden it, it doesn't feel like a whole lot of pressure here, does it? It's like, oh boy, he's got he's got his work cut out for him over here. This might seem like a bit of a vacation for him. Uh, you know what though? That's not the truth. Both these two drivers are feeling pressure because they know there's three laps left to go. They both want this win and to get the win, they've got some stiff competition to uh, defeat Morgan wide there. Morgan very wide. I think that might give Rasmus an opportunity down this front straight. Have to see he's a little bit closer than he was the last time, though not as good of a run off the corner exit. Three to go this time. These four GT cars are really not getting the kind of toe that I thought they would have done. Yeah, I was going to say they've got a tiny bit of it, but not enough, so to speak, to have a substantial move unless you're, you nail your corner exit or you're at least three car lanes behind. Right now, the downside is for Rasmus, he's only four or five back. Just scanning the rest of the field down the time in the scoring there. There's a few battles, but I think as we enter the uh, last few miles of this race, this is definitely the battle we want to keep our eye on because the, the opportunity for Rasmus could present itself at any time. It looks like Morgan has been more prone to mistakes. But honestly, I'm almost wondering if it's going to take a mistake by Morgan to give Rasmus a lead. He, it doesn't seem like the toe is enough for him to be able to uh, make a move that way. Curious how, again, the 68 plays this. Remember, it was fairly competitive at the Daytona Road Course to start off the season as well. Better stretch, though, in Sector 2 out of hurry downs through the carousel once again, trying to take a wider arc this time. Tighter line for Morgan. Oh, this is wild. The scrap continues to note for P4, where Harrington has lost several positions this lap, lost two in the carousel. And it's still back and forth, too, with Tommy Ryan at the out of the racetrack. As these cars come to two laps to go, these cars are doing each other. Oh, that's not what you really want to be doing during the kink. Here we go, though, down the Canada corner. This is a much safer place to try and make a move. Oh, they don't want to play it safe. I'm sure they'll be ban banning on each other's doors in the kink next time around. The trigger that started that battle, by the way, Harrington overshot the run out of hurry downs to turn eight. And in turn, we're side by side. You'll see Harrington off in the sand trap. Looking like, okay, he's lost a spot to Ryan because Ryan's got the momentum. Then uh, they enter the braking zone of the carousel. Yeah, so here we go. This is all fair and good. But uh, yeah, the kink isn't a place you want to be side by side in any kind of car. But they pulled it off. Able to survive despite oh. a little bit of Res argy barginess. Rasmus just locked up. Rasmus just locked, uh, lost a bunch of time to Aaron Morgan. I, I don't think the race is over, but we'll get a replay here. This definitely hasn't helped his cause. It happened over in turn three. We're, we're watching them here. A replay on the front straight uh, happens in a few moments. You'll see Rasmus just gaining and gaining, and then all of a sudden he loses uh, uh, all of that hard work. This is turn one. He's been trying to late break some of the corners to try and gain some more speed on entry. This time he absolutely missed it. And there, so we saw a replay. Otis has just spun from fourth. Otis put the wheel off, entering turn six, went around and has lost a bunch of positions. Well, two positions. So he's lost a bunch of time. Everybody making mistakes. That's now three in the span of about a lap or so. Move Otis back to P6. All this is while Aaron Morgan has about a lap and a third to go in this race and now holds a 1.5 second lead. Growing even quicker now. Heading towards Canada Corner. And can put one hand on the championship trophy with this race today. Uh, I think after what we've seen uh, through the last lap, you're being a bit optimistic there. There's nothing saying Morgan uh, might not make another mistake. We've seen a couple out of him so far this race, just without consequences. Coming to start the final lap. White flag up in the air, one lap to go in the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America on the HyperX Summer Series. 
still has to make it a long ways around this track four miles 1.6 seconds is the buffer if he is able to keep it on track and not make any mistakes a real battle for us to watch on the final lap is going to be for fourth place between Ryan and Harrington and Harrington just threw it into the first corner Justin Similar to what we've seen Rasmus try and do that time, though he made it stick. Similar breaking mark again to Rasmus, though that time just avoided the lockup and nearly spun it. Harrington really going full beans here. Let's see, I think he's going to try and pull out and make this happen into turn five, even if he does have to come from a little ways back. Oh, that looks a bit further back there from that cockpit angle. He does stick his nose out just to intimidate Tommy a little bit. It might work. We've seen Tommy make mistakes. More than a few today, just not close enough, may come down to the last set of corners. Again, this is all for valuable points for the finale coming up on September the 27th at the Brickyard, where drivers will be racing on the oval there. Ryan, strong oval driver, looking for a strong points finish in this four race championship series throughout this summertime. Still half a track to go for them. This is all while your race leader, Aaron Morgan, has pulled to 1.5 seconds now on Rasmus. Into the last couple hard breaking zones. Aaron Morgan looking for the full sweep. It's been a dominating performance here at Road America for him. He entered today as the points leader. His competition not able to make it today. As a result, he could put one hand on the championship trophy. Checker flag up in hand. It's Aaron Morgan who wins the HyperX Grand Prix of Road America. Yeah, Tommy Ryan... Ha ha the Tommy Ryan and Harrington came together, but it wasn't Harrington's fault. Tommy Ryan overshot Canada corner, got sideways, and Harrington basically came around the turn and finished the job off. Very surprising that Ryan didn't try and drive the car back. He had a big enough gap. You'll see it will get another angle of a replay here. So watch, this was a single car mistake. Harrington sticks his nose to the inside a bit. He's trying to get in Ryan's head, but Ryan puts his wheels on the gravel, gets sideways, Harrington finishes him off. But then after uh, Otis came around, or, or was it Jenkins? No, did he wreck Otis here? Otis wrecks too. Oh. Several drivers got shuffled down the board. As a result, Otis lost an additional spot as Christopher Reagan passed him along with Jenkins, who stole a top five. Yeah, I, I thought Otis got by it cleanly, and I was just checking our finishing order, and I'm like, hold on, Otis isn't fifth. So, yeah, I, I guess that's why Tommy Ryan towed. I, I thought he had plenty of room to try and still get it to the line. But uh, there you go. Take a step aside. Post-race coverage coming up in just a few moments. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel from the virtual Alcourt Lake. Wisconsin.
Welcome back to the HyperX Summer Series and coverage of Round 3 at Road America for the HyperX Post Race Show. The Line Art Racing Series is powered by HyperX. When you're trying to claw your way to the top of the podium, it pays to have an ultra-comfortable, high-quality headset that gives you the audio information you need to grab that checker flag. From high-performance DRAM and SSDs, outstanding microphones, accurate mice, responsive keyboards, to the legendary cloud line of gaming headsets, HyperX makes the gaming gear you need to succeed. Casual or pro, no matter your creed, color, or culture, we're all gamers, and HyperX is always ready to game. Use the promo code LIONHRT15 at HyperXGaming.com. It was a full round sweep for Aaron Morgan, a dominant performance, winning by 1.4 seconds in the feature race today over Mike Rasimus. Chris Fowler rounded out the top three. Those drivers started in those positions in today's feature. Then it became the wild card moments. P4 on back. What do I mean by that? Connor Harrington finished in fourth after a crazy final couple laps for several of his competitors. Paul Jenkins, after running seventh much of the day, came home in P5. Christopher Reagan recovered from a bad sprint race finish to a P6 in the feature, while Ryan Otis still finished seventh after spinning in the grass trying to avoid several cars. Andrew Kinsella finished in eighth. Bart Workman and Tom Drowling quietly rounded out your top ten today, Samuel. Yes, in 11th position, once it was all over, was Ron Hacker, Trevor Malone in 12th place, and George Anzaldo down in 13th. Then we get to the drivers that didn't make it to the end. Tommy Ryan, who towed after his last lap spin. I guess he felt he was getting in the way after uh, Ryan Otis went off trying to avoid him. Brian Greenlee and Tyler Graf both had a crash at Turn 1. Uh, Graf's uh, race had already started going downhill by that point. And Matt Taylor will never know how well he would have done because he lost the connection on the pace lap. A dominating performance, and you can essentially put one hand on the trophy if you're Aaron Morgan. Aaron Morgan dominated today at Road America. Now joins us in the broadcast booth, Aaron how are you feeling after a dominant round you led every single lap in the day? I am utterly exhausted. I, you know, there wasn't much wheel to wheel action, but that was the most intense race I think I've ever been in because that track, it's just so special, man. There's no runoff. So when you push it so hard, it's a sprint race. So you just push it as hard as you can every lap. I was holding my breath in every corner. It's, whew, and Mike is just, he just matched my pace exactly. Uh, it was just down to me making a couple mistakes that closed the gap, and he, I think he made one near the end that sealed it. was going to say it looked intense because while you were starting to lose some time, Rasmus closed up a two-plus second gap. What was going through your head in the feature race scene? Oh, hey, he's right behind me, nearly at my back bumper. Well, I knew that our pace was, was like I said, it's like pretty much identical. The, this, the gap was closed just completely from the two mistakes I made. I think he had like one or two corners he was faster, and the rest of it I just kind of would claw it back a little. Um, going into turn three down the hill, I was breaking, you know, use that far right as much as you can, and I like locked up because I hit the curb a little, and that, that bump locked it up and lost me about a second. And then after that, I, I had a, a bad exit on the, the last corner, and that, that gave him the other second, and he just kind of, at that point, he was just in my draft. So it was just all-out push. It was, it was intense, I, but my, my mentality that is I want to win this or I'm going to crash by, you know, extending a little too much, but I just did real close. As talked about, you can essentially put one hand on the championship trophy, your second-place competitor in the points, not able to make it to the start of today's race with work commitments. Your third place competitor in the championship just said via YouTube prior to the post-race show beginning that he was on vacation and just got back for the finish. How are you now feeling about hearing that news for the finale at the Brickyard? Well, I knew I knew going into it, because um, just seeing who he had at the practice, yeah, it was, it was probably going to be a situation where I could just kind of put a hand on the trophy, like you said. It's it's a lot of fun. It feels great, especially just ah, this car, man. I, I love this car. I need to race it more again. I, I dropped all my GTE racing for this, you know, for Lionheart, other Lionheart stuff, but I should probably go back because it's fun. Real quick, we want to ask you about the Brickyard. It's on the Oval. Your thoughts going there to end off the season? 
Oh, it's gonna be fun, especially with how much fun I had at uh, Milwaukee in this thing. This this car is a surprise on the oval, and now we're gonna have that super high speed. I, I'm wondering, uh, you know, these GTs they don't have that much aero, but with how high speed that's gonna be, I wonder if it might make just a little difference. Probably won't. It's compared more to a stock car around uh, Milwaukee. It's it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be real intense there too with how high speed it is. Anyone you want to thank for your victories today? Oh, you know, just just George, you know, and Zaldo putting this all together and just having a lot of fun. I'm racing in this league every week in any series they have me in, all but the top one. It's just so much fun. These guys are, these guys really push you, and they're they're clean. Congratulations on the round sweep. We'll see how you do as you look to secure the championship in a couple weeks. Congrats. Thanks, man. Aaron Morgan, your race winner today. For Mike Rasmus, he matched his career high in Lionheart Racing Series sanctioned competition with a P2 finish in the feature race as well as in the sprint race today. He's with Samuel Ryman. Yeah, Mike, second place finish, as Justin mentioned. Uh, that's your best Lionheart finish in any division, but I'm sure that's not a good stat uh, you wanted. How bad did you want that win? Pretty bad, but I knew it was going to be real hard to beat Aaron because our times were so similar. And uh, once I got in the draft, I think I lost a lot of front end grip. And it's really hard to get off of those fast corners uh, when you're following someone. And I uh, I knew unless he made some big mistakes, I wasn't really going to get too much closer than where I was at the end there. I noticed it looked like you went uh, full send on the final lap through the kink. Were you flat out? I was pretty close if I wasn't exactly flat out. I just felt like I, you know, just might as well send it, see what happens. And uh, pretty much that's what I expected to happen. And I was able to hang on to it. So that's good. So how, how was it? Because, you know, um, the Ford GT, this it is a track that you would sometimes see it race on here at Road America. How was the setup and everything, especially with the high track temperature out there today? Was tire wear ever a concern? I think keeping the tires relatively cool or trying not to slide them too much was really important. Um, and doing that also kind of helps your focus. If you're not pushing, overly pushing the car, you can kind of make small gains, a lot of small gains, instead of trying to make big gain all at once. And uh, this car really rewards smooth driving and also doesn't have any room for error. So if you put a wheel off or anything, you're going to lose a bunch of time. Well, one race left to go this season in Indianapolis. What are your thoughts or goals heading into the season finale? Uh, my first two races in this series were kind of a wash. So hoping just to do as best I can and, and, uh, and just enjoy myself because uh, this series can be super fun if the racing is good, you know? Well, the racing was definitely good up front today. Thanks for putting on the great show. And no, you didn't come home with that win that you wanted. Anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? Just want to thank everyone racing in the series and George for uh, inviting us to do so. And uh, you guys at GSRC always, uh, always make it really fun to watch. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks again uh, for coming to talk to us and congrats on the second place. And hopefully that win isn't too far away. Thanks. Once again, Mike Rasmus, P2 today. Chris Fowler finished in third in the feature race. Chris, how are you feeling as you held on for the final podium spot? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good after that, man. I, I got a good start uh, and tried to keep Mike behind me, but I knew it was only a matter of time before he got around. And I didn't want to fight him too much because I knew if I, let, if I fought him, then the guys behind him would catch up to me. So I just trying to uh, hold pace and keep going. I knew once I got around him, I just had to stay with him. And uh, it was a long race, man. That was really exhausting. I was going to say, how difficult was this race for you to try and hold on? Because you were holding on at one point to second and then looked like you started falling off in the feature. Yeah. Once Mike got around me, I just started making mistakes. I was trying to keep up with Mike. I just couldn't keep up his pace. And I was just making mistakes, which got Connor back on my rear. And then at that point, I was just trying to put my head down and just get back, uh, get that gap back ahead of, of Connor. And I noticed in my in my rear view that they had some issues so that I got to light up a little bit. But man, that was really exhausting. Just uh, a lot of pressure with him behind me, just trying to keep on track and not make mistakes. 
This moves you, by the way, into fourth in the standings. You gained five spots, in fact, after today's race. Chance to finish as high as second in the standings. What's your approach going to be like for the Brickyard? Uh, we're going all in, man. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. I really love racing Brickyard. It's, it's a great track. Um, I think these cars is going to be it's going to be a huge draft fest. Uh, so we're just going to have to be careful. Uh, it's going to be wheel to wheel. So we just have to mind our P's and Q's and uh, have a good race and try to be up front, try to finish. That's that's the goal. Try to get up front and run a, win a race in this series. Anyone you want to thank for your run today? Uh, several people. Uh, thank George for allowing me in the Lionheart. Uh, thank Lionheart series for allowing me uh, to race their Indy cars and of course HyperX for putting on the summer series. It's It's been a blast. I usually just race open wheel cars and coming into this GT has been, it's been a really a blast. So I'm, I'm enjoying the summer series and glad I'm a part of it. Congratulations on the podium to round out the feature race tonight. Congrats. Thank you. Once again, that's Chris Fowler, finisher in P3. The HyperX Grand Prix of Road America's feature race. I'd like to thank him, Mike Rasmus and Aaron Morgan for taking the time to speak with us. Now, Samuel, points are now in, and Aaron Morgan leads by 42 points over Ryan Otis after two of his competitors missed today's action in James Gruhl and Ricky Harden. It's in a prime position now for him to win this championship. As long as he keeps the car clean, he's been the only driver to finish in the top five for every single race so far. Yeah, and I had the feeling that's what it would take to win this championship. Uh, su surprisingly, you know, Otis was a very good road course driver. He was up there today, but not uh, up at the very front. So, you know, it's a little disappointing to see him coming home in seventh. But I think, honestly, in Indianapolis might be a bit of a crap shoot, even if these cars do push in the turns. We're going to have uh, some massive packs, I should imagine, from how long the straights are around there. So who, who knows what we're going to see in the championship finale. And I'm sure Aaron Morgan will be hoping he's just able to get out of there cleanly and able to bring home that cup. And keep in mind, the championship is not clinched whatsoever. Because on top of having bonus points for the pole position, whoever leads laps and the most laps led, the maximum amount of points you can get from the race itself are 60 points. 63 with bonus points. When you add that math up, Aaron Morgan will also have Ryan Otis, Mike Rasmus, Chris Fowler, Andrew Kinsella, and Tyra Graf mathematically eligible if they can get max points, specifically for Kinsella and Graf, to fight for the championship. So if anything goes wrong for Morgan in that race, such as a crash, even a bad finish, he could potentially lose the championship, Samuel. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about short championships, isn't it? They always keep the... Uh... They always keep the championship battle open to many more cars, and this is only a four-race season. So, as a result, we have several drivers who can win this title. Finn's looking in Aaron Morgan's favor once again, but uh, I, I don't know what to expect at Indianapolis. I don't know anyone who does, and so I uh, hope everyone tunes in in two weeks, and we'll find out together. Morgan gave himself a good cushion, but we'll see how the Brickyard fares out. But I'd like to take the time to thank all the series sponsors for Lionheart in its many different competitions. Whether it's the HyperX Summer Series, its Retro Series, as well as its main IndyCar Series. We see sponsors such as First Medical Equipment. And the source for medical supplies and equipment in the Burlington, Iowa area for years because of their superior commitment to provide the absolute best in product quality and customer service. As well, HyperX. Whether you play, however you play, HyperX knows for all gamers. Use the promo code LionHRT15 at HyperXGaming.com. Once again, the code word LionHRT15, no spaces, at HyperXGaming.com. To contact any of those sponsors you just saw on screen, go to LionHeartRacingSeries.com. I'd also like to thank many of the others involved in today's action, including the software and hardware. Provided for a broadcast now listed up on screen. Additional thanks go to Jude Lawn who provides her wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. To say thanks to the team today once again in Samuel and Sean. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC and Queen's upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can check out our merchandise for sale at GSRC.StormVY.com. Or you can check out our social media on Twitter at GSR Channel. Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel and Instagram at GSRC underscore Gram.
don't forget to head over to your YouTube page and hit that big red subscribe button so you don't miss a moment here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. As mentioned, the series finale for 2020 in the summertime goes to the Brickyard on the Oval. That will be on Sunday, September 27th, shortly after the European Pro Splits' conclusion for the Major Series. That starts at 3.45 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.45 p.m. GMT, and that also is about 12.45 p.m. Pacific. Be sure to tune in for what could be a cracker of a finale to determine a champion. We also have many upcoming races for other series listed up on your screen, including the Major Series for its American Split for Silver Crown Racing later on tonight. Be sure to tune in on the iRacing Esports Network. Approximately 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time is the start for coverage. But with that, until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.